Groaning Science students, I'm just going to start with my usual disclaimer that there are variations in the way that we can approach the evolution of our report writing skills. For me, two critical points of emphasis, regardless of where you've learned how to write a PRAC investigation report, is number one, I want to see some higher order thinking skills. This process, this skill evolves over secondary school. And secondly, the use of scientific literacy. So best to test this with an example. My example is to determine whether single or double glazed windows are more effective in acting as insulators against the tr heat transfer from a thermal source. The equipment that we use will be these stellar kits where students in class time can construct these mini virtual houses, shine a thermal lamp on it, and log the change in temperature on these data loggers. So what I suggest is dividing the discussion into three sections. Each section will have roughly a paragraph, possibly two paragraphs, dedicated to addressing the criteria. So the first section is the analysis of the data. So let's zoom in here and look at the statistics generated from my mock trial. So in the analysis, we refer to any graphs and any tables that we've already produced um, in our results section. So we can see here that we've got the temperature. This is our VV. We've got the IV down here, single versus double glazing. And what we want to look at is the trend. And so for the first three minutes, we're chugging along with a very similar temperature as, the, as both the single glazed and double glazed rooms are heating up gradually. But then something happens after about four minutes and we get a bit of a gap right here. So what we want to draw our reader attention to is the fact that after about three or four minutes, the double glazed windows are more effectively insulating than the single glazed windows. Now, let's take the analysis a bit further by referring to our raw data that would be presented in a table. And rather than just pointing out that there's a big difference between uh, the final temperature of our two variations, let's get a little bit mathsy. So if we look at our double glaze final temperature, 23.5, and we subtract our starting temperature um, after zero minutes of 20.5 degrees, we get a three degree increase. Let's look at the, the double glaze and do the same process. Our ending temp minus our starting temp. If you can't work that out in your head, pull out your calculator, 29.1 minus 20.9. That's an 8.2 degree increase. So, um, we don't need to be mathematical gurus to be able to identify that that is a huge variation after only five minutes of testing, well over double the increase when we have the single glaze versus the double glaze, highlighting that the double glaze is far more effective in insulating um, that, that heat transfer. Part two of the discussion is the evaluation of the methodology. Whenever we evaluate anything in science, we look for the pros and the cons. So I want my students to go back to their introduction, have a look at their control, the control variables that they identified, and explain, utilising scientific literacy, how that has enhanced the accuracy of their data. So for instance, we did two trials here. We used the same equipment for all of the trials. We used the same data logger. Ideally, we've measured the gap between the lamp and the windows. Um, and all of this ensures or helps enhance um, the ability for us to accurately measure our DV. Second point, then we go to town on some of the limitations of our methodology because we've done this prac 
using some uh, equipment that is symbolic of what we have in houses. Um, we've probably been a bit rushed, but what we want here is to reference scientific literacy. So first of all, we're gonna say whether we think it was a fair test. A fair test would be if we've perfectly uh, measured our DV and the only thing that's affected our DV is the manipulation of our IV. Now that will rarely happen in a science classroom. So then let's take it a bit further by talking about some potential errors. Now maybe there was a, a reading error in terms of the timing when we actually viewed our data. We could have an instrumental error because maybe the probe that we're using to measure the temperature um, could potentially be a little bit volatile or possibly even a, a personal error. We're gonna call ourselves out in terms of our technique. Maybe we bumped uh, the lamp and so therefore that's altered the angle in which it's radiating heat into the, um, into the actual house. Then you wanna be able to discuss precision. Now, if there's been repetition in the testing, then you'd look at how closely the scores uh, relate and if they're fairly close, you'd go, well, that indicates high precision. But in this case, we've only done one trial. So you'd simply call yourself out and say that we're unable to evaluate the precision. Then in the third part of the evaluation, you're going to talk, touch on how some of these flaws could be overcome by doing uh, repeated testing. So we can evaluate the, um, the actual precision of the data. Also some means of reducing any errors. So maybe we could video, the actual experiment. Um, maybe we could basically set our um, stations up in a way so that it, they, none of the equipment can be knocked, etc. Third and final section is the conclusion, which will often be presented separately from the actual discussion. We start by referring to our results and going back to at the start of our report restating our, our hypothesis and stating whether it is supported or rejected. Then we try and bring a real world context to our findings. And so therefore, um, in this case, we go, well, our results indicate that double glazing is more effective than single glazing in insulating the effects of heat transfer from a thermal source. But we would encourage further testing, uh, particularly back to that um, precision comment I made earlier, so that we can generate more reproducible data, which is good science. Then we're not repeating the stuff that we mentioned in our evaluation. We're going to point out that we aren't, basically we have done this very rapidly, five minute testing. So therefore we need to be a bit careful in um, applying our conclusion to that real world context because that doesn't symbolize what goes on in real life. So therefore we would encourage um, future testing to be incorporated over many hours, particularly given the variations in the sun, um, the angle of the sun that it hits our atmosphere. So therefore the variations over the course of the day in that uh, the intensity of that thermal source also, we want to mention that these, our data is based on kits. So therefore, um, is that really representative of the, the much vaster volume that we would have in a real home? 